As a review, we introduced the definitions of the trigonometric functions based on right triangles, but that limited us to acute angles between 0 and 90 degrees. We then superimposed these right triangles onto the unit circle so that we could create a definition for the trigonometric functions on lar angles larger than 90 degrees or less than 0 degrees. Specifically, given our beautiful unit circle here, we've defined these three trigonometric functions, where the sine of any angle in this unit circle is the y value, the cosine of any angle is the x value, and the tangent is the y value divided by the x value. The next thing that we want to do then is to define the three other trig functions based on this unit circle definition. And we can actually use the reciprocal identities that we saw when we first introduced these functions. Specifically, we know that the secant of theta is equal to one over the cosine of theta for any theta value. We know that the cosecant of theta is equal to one over sine of theta and finally, we know that the cotangent of theta is equal to one over the tangent of theta. And in this context of the unit circle, we know the definitions of sine, cosine, and tangent. So in this case right here, the secant of theta is one over cosine. The cosine of theta is the x value. So the secant is one over the x value. The cosecant is one over sine, sine is y. And then the, tan the cotangent is 1 over tangent. The tangent is y over x. 1 over that is just the reciprocal, which would be x over y. And as defined here, we can evaluate all of these six trig functions for any values of theta, positive or negative, no matter how large or how small. But importantly, when we're working, it's important to focus on the sine, cosine, tangent. The secant, cosecant, and cotangent will always just think of reciprocals of those first three functions. And part of memorizing this, we're going to talk a bit more about in this video, is the fact that sine is related to cosecant and cosine is related to secant. And the way that I think about it is that relationship between those four right there, the S is related to the C and the S is related to the C. Obviously the tangent and the cotangent are related to each other. So again, just to say that when I have sine, that's related to cosecant. They're just flipped versions of each other. But importantly, we think about the sine being the Y value, the cosecant being one over that Y value. And then before we do an example, we find all six of these trig ratios for a given angle. What I first want to do is clarify a vocabulary word that we use, which is reference angle. You saw this. When we created the unit circle, we used these reference angles to create all of these points, that these known points on the unit circle. But I want to give us a very strict definition. So an angle's reference angle is the smallest angle to the horizontal axis. So given any angle that we have, the, the reference angle is that the smallest angle between that and the horizontal axis or the x-axis. As a clarifying example, this angle of pi over 6 or 30 degrees right here, so this triangle we created to find this point on the unit circle, well we use that same angle to generate those other four points on the unit circle, specifically 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. So we would say that for 5 pi over 6, the, the reference angle is pi over 6. It's that one in the first quadrant that we reference to create that point. And then as displayed on the unit circle here, we could also write this in degrees. We could say the 30, the 30 degrees is the reference angle for 150, 210, and 330 degrees. All right, we're now well equipped to answer the following question, to find all six trig ratios for the angle 5 pi over 3. In this example, what I'm going to do is walk through the entire process that I use to answer this question without any other aids, just the knowledge I have. I want to add here a few little tricks that I use for, for generating the part of the unit circle that I need using the reference angle. All right, so the first thing I need to do is get a feel for this 5 pi over 3. I'm going to draw my little unit circle right here to prepare myself. I'm not going to fill it all out. All I'm really looking to do is for the information for this angle right here. Um, and I always just start here by throwing these three known reference angles right here at 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees, or in radians, which is going to be important here, is pi over 6, pi over 4, and pi over 3. And this is an important trick that I use to memorize these coordinates right here. So I have these coordinates, and I could just use rote memory to memorize them. But the trick that I use is this. 
these components right here actually follow a really kind of really easy to know pattern is that they are all the values either the square root of one over two, the square root of two over two, or the square root of three over two. The only one that I wrote down here kind of strange is this first one. We don't write it as a square root of one over two. We write it as just one over two because the square root of one is one. But when I write it like this, for me personally, it's very clear which is the bigger one. This is the biggest of the group. This is the smallest because they have the same denominator. This is just the bigger numerator. And why that helps me is this. When I'm trying to figure out this point versus this point versus this point right here, I know by far, when I look at this, the X value is much larger than the Y value. So the X value is the largest of the group. That's this root three over two. Then as I go up this, the X values get smaller. So it becomes root two over two and then root one over two or just one half. And then the y values go the opposite direction. This is one half, this is square root of two over two, and this is the square root of three over two. And again, I can generate that pretty quickly. Then what I'm going to do is look for the information for five pi over three. I need to think about where this would be. One thing I, one trick I always use for this is to relate this either to pi radians or two pi radians. And in this case right here, this actually is a third less than two pi radians, because two pi radians would be six pi over three, or I also can think about it as pi over three, two pi over three, three pi over three, four pi over three, five pi over three, six pi over three. But I'm interested in right here in five pi over three. The important piece of that being is that this is pi over three from this axis right here. So this will have points that are related to this pi over three points right here. In fact, as we look at it, it will have exactly the same X value, except for since we're down here in this quadrant, we'll have a negative Y value. And now that we've identified the point associated with our angle, we've done most of the work. Now we just got to go through all those definitions. The cosine of that angle of five pi over three is the X value and the X value is one half. The sine of this angle five pi over three is simply the Y value, which is negative the square root of three over two. The tangent of five pi over three will take us a little bit more work as it usually will, but it won't be too tough. The tangent is the y value divided by the x value. So the y value here is the negative root three over two divided by one half. We don't want to give an answer like that, but this is a complex fraction. If we just multiply the numerator and denominator of this fraction by the common denominator of two, this will reduce down to negative root three over one, um, which we could simply just write as negative square root of three. Then for the final three trig functions, what I'm not going to do is go back to that definition I just gave of one over x, one over y, or x over y. What I'm instead going to use is that intermediate step of the reciprocals. Since I have the first three trig functions here, now when I'm looking for the secant of five pi over three, I know that that is the reciprocal of the cosine. And so since the cosine is one over two, I know that this is two over one, or I could just write this as two. Then for the cosecant, I'll do exactly the same thing. So five pi over three is the reciprocal of the sine. So the secant is the reciprocal of the sine, which would be negative two over the square root of three. Though here we don't like giving answers that have radicals in the denominator. So we'll just multiply both the numerator and denominator here by the square root of three. That cleans it up and gets us to negative two square root of three over three. And then finally, the cotangent. The cotangent function is just, or the ratio or function, however you want to think about it, is just the inverse of the tangent right here. And so we know the tangent is negative uh, square root of three. So this would be negative one over the square root of three. I'm going to give this the same treatment as uh, multiplying by the square root of three to rationalize the denominator giving me negative square root of three over three. This example really illustrates a couple of places it's really important to be at at this point in trigonometry. First is to understand the definition for all six trig ratios for any given angle. Second is how to use reference angles to find other points on the unit circle. 
And again, in this case, in working with five pi over three, I didn't have to look at any other information. I could generate the information for five pi over three using the reference angle of pi over three. And then backtracking one more step, I didn't reference a different unit circle. I just use a device, this really a mnemonic device that I'm using or a mathematical device to generate these points based on the fact that I have the square root of one over two, square root of two over two, and the square root of three over two. And then thinking about the, the general magnitudes of their X and Y values given on, on the points that they are. Once I've done that, I then have the coordinate points at five pi over three, and then I can go through with a little bit of algebraic work, go and give the simplified exact answers for all six of these trig ratios.